So, Alan Cusack, uh, welcome to Noise11.com, the first chance I've had to interview you. So, welcome to Noise11. Ah, oh, thank you. It's such a pleasure to be here. I appreciate it. And we have an album to talk about, uh, an album of Irish songs, but not the first album. This is the second album. Uh, the first album came mm. out in 2023. So these two projects have come very close together. Look, I got together with Robert Rigby, who I'd worked with before in the past, um, and he basically said to me, look, we should record something together. So which was, you know, a bit of a dream comes true, to be honest with you. I'd had a career as a soprano and then I got married and I had children. So to reconnect with Robert and to be able to put new music out um, was actually incredibly special and, you know, just a really lucky moment in my life. You know, of course, you've got to prepare, be prepared for those moments, but, you know, there's an element of luck in it too. So it was really lovely to reconnect with Robert and to be able to record both of these projects with him. Well, the album is the Irish Songbook, and I would imagine uh, in trying to compile down to a short list of songs, considering how many Irish songs there are, yeah. must have been very difficult. You would have spent a lot of time just working out, these are the ten I want to do. Look, I have been playing this music. I started playing the guitar when I was ten. And even though, you know, I was a classical guitarist, I also used to just love playing the Beatles, Elvis, and Irish music because I had an Irish dad. Mm. And even on my mum's side, like my mum's mum, she loved Celtic music. She loved the Dubliners. She loved the Pogues. She loved the Clancy Brothers. So that's the kind of music that I grew up playing myself. So I had at least a good 20 years of um you know, Irish music, of playing Irish music to actually filter through and and figure out, you know, what meant the most to me and what I thought people would love. Well, let's do a bit of a deep dive into the songs because, uh, you know, when I, when I went and started to research a bit of what each song was about, some of these are fairly new, but, you know, some of them go past centuries back. So uh, I want to jump first in with uh, not the opening song on the album, but Carrick Fergus, which uh, is a song that I know very well uh, from Brian Ferry, uh, but it's been yes. by Van Morrison uh, and even Absolutely. Damien Leith, who's on this record. Yes. Well, yes. Yeah. I mean, what a pleasure it was to sing with him too. What a great guy and such a beautiful voice. I mean, I was such a lucky girl to be able to work with him. Well, we'll get to his song in a moment, Cara Fergus. Uh, it doesn't go back that far. I think it's probably about 40, 50 years old. It's not, you know, by comparison to some of the other songs, a really old song. Yeah, it's not. And to be honest with you, it has, it's such a prolific song. As you said, you know, so many people have recorded it. And I had relatives, I've got an uncle that's been in the music business in Ireland for a really long time. And he was like, this is just one of those really quintessential Irish pieces that people love. And, you know, it's the heart of the storytelling of Irish people and it's something that they do incredibly well. And for me, as a classical crossover singer, you know, you've heard so many people cover this song, but it was really special for me as a classical crossover singer to even be able to sing it. Like it just lends itself to so many different genres of singers. Well, a song about the people, and we'll get into the Damien Lee song, Isle of Hope, Isle of Tears. And this is about uh, Annie Moore, the first Irish immigrant into the USA. That's it. And, I mean, what an incredible melody and uh, the sentiment behind the lyrics. I mean, it just really resonates with people. Like the history of Ireland at times has been so sad and so hard. And the fact that they've been able to really, you know, for people create these memories in these beautiful music and lyrics and, you know, for people to be able to sing what they felt in their heart. And, you know, as you probably know, this is written by the guy who wrote You Raise Me Up. And you can kind of tell the grandness in this song, um, but also 
you know, to be able to sing it with Damien, like it was just, you know, for me when his years in uh, doing uh, Australian Idol, you know, it was the first time I'd ever voted for someone on any television show. You know, I used to sit there and watch what they were doing and I'd take little things from their performance that maybe I might like. But for him, I was like, this guy deserves it. Like he's got such a great voice and he sings with so much feeling and you know that he loves it. And now, you know, 20 years later, here's me singing with Damien, you know, and being able to do that now on a national and international stage. Like it's a bit unbelievable, to be honest with you. Let's uh, talk about the opening song on the album, uh, the song for Ireland. And, uh, it's not really an old song either. It right? only dates back to the 1980s. Yes, but to be honest with you, it was one of the main tracks that I really wanted to record. I grew up listening to Mary Black and I loved her voice and she was such an incredible Irish artist. Um, she sang the most beautiful song called Magillama and that really resonated with me. And then from that one song and listening more to Mary's um, catalog, I found the song for Ireland. Now it's been covered by every Irish artist that's out there, but hers really resonated with me. Like I loved that version of that song. And you know, the Dubliners, everybody, they've all they've all sung it and put their own spin on it. But I don't know, there was something about just being able to sit there with my guitar and play and sing that song. And, you know, we talk about Irish artists and Irish writers and how they are able to tell their story and resonate with the history and you know, colour their words. Um, they they just have this incredible ability to be able to connect. And this song is really the most perfect example of that. Like, it's just so picturesque. The next song in the uh, album that I want to talk about, I'll Tell Me Ma, is actually a children's uh -huh. song. It also has a children's game attached to it, I believe. Yeah, and you know too, even the Wiggles, the Wiggles have actually covered I'll Tell Me Ma. Um, for me, the track originally that resonated with me with this song was Sinead O'Connor's version. So mm. if you have a little listen to Sinead O'Connor's version, you'll be able to hear some of the similarities with that. Um, hers was slightly more stripped back and it also, it's ever so slightly slower, than, ever so slightly slower than what a lot of people sing this, but... Holy moly, do people love this song live? Like it is definitely a toe-tapping song that people just, whenever I, um, there's an Australian band called Murphy's Pigs. They're, a, uh, they're such a great group of guys that an incredible bunch of Celtic musicians and singers and storytellers. And whenever I tour with those guys and I open for them, I always sing I'll Tell Me Ma and the crowd go wild. It's so great. It, from the stage, it's just so fun to watch them all singing. A song that everybody knows, Danny Boy, and I've uh, been carbon dating this one. I come up with the year 1910, so this yeah. one is a century old. Yeah, yeah. And, look, I had to sing this song. Absolutely, I had to sing this song. And this version is actually really special. Um, it was originally written for Roy Orbison, so there's a little, uh, a small prelude and a couple of bars just at the end that when you listen to this, it's completely different to, to anything I've ever heard before. I've only heard one other singer sing it like this live, which is Tommy Fleming. And Tommy is the only other person I've ever heard sing live. And when I, I, I delved a bit deeper, I actually found that it was written for Roy Orbison. And we've actually just filmed a film clip for, for this because it was just such a special song to record and special version, I didn't want that moment to pass me by. So I really wanted to be able to make sure that um, I paid my dues to singing Danny Boy. So when that comes out in a couple of weeks, I'll have to send it through to you. I think you'll love it. Absolutely. Well, I hope you will. <laughs> 
<laughs> Tommy Makin. No pressure. No, no pressure. No pressure. <laughs> Tommy uh, uh, Tommy Makin's Four Green Fields is a track from yes. 1957. How do you know that one? When I was about 14, I often used to sing at a fundraiser for St. Patrick's Day. It was actually a fundraiser that used to help pay for students to be able to um, have their education through Catholic education. So I used to always sing at that fundraiser to make sure that those children would have their education paid for. And it's something that I've done for years. So even when I was living in Sydney and Brisbane, I'd travel home to Bundaberg to sing at that concert. And every year I wanted to sing this song and my mum would say to me, don't sing it, it's too sad. And now (laughs) I get to sing it because I just, there's something about this. Tommy Makem's mum wrote it. Um, and, you know, I mean, I've said it about 150 billion times in the last few weeks, but, you know, again, we talk about, you know, the hard times in Ireland and its history. And this song in particular, just really, you know, I had four green fields. Each one was a jewel. Strangers came and tried to take it from me. I'd find strong sons. They fought to save my jewels. They fought and died. And that was my grief, said she. You know, isn't that beautiful? Wow. Um, Next song, The Rare Old Times from the 1970s, and this one with Michael Cristiano, who is also the producer of this album. Yes, and I I am so blessed to have Michael in my life. Honestly, I've done two albums with him. Both albums have gone to number one on the ARIA charts for the classical crossover charts, and I just feel like it would be so hard for me to work with anyone else. Like he is just the most incredible musician um, and from the full production that was my first album, Whisper of Angels, to it being completely stripped back with the Irish songbook, with the guitar, the violin, and on the very odd occasion, the odd instrument added in. Um, I mean, you just can hear his skill. He is just so incredibly talented. And I literally said to him, we had picked 10 tracks and I had said to him, I love this song, but it's a duet. And he, I just kind of gave him a little smile and he said, would you like me to sing this with you? I'm like, yes, I would absolutely love to sing this song with you. So uh, I just love the fact that he said yes and we actually got to do this song together because it's such a beautiful song. I feel like if you go to any Irish show, this song is going to be sung, usually towards the end. So it was really special for me to be able to do the rare old times with him. Lady of Knock. Now, this is an interesting story because it's kind of based on an Irish Catholic hymn, um, Mm -hmm. but written by Dana Rosemary Scallon, who is a singer, songwriter and politician who once was the President of Ireland. Yes, yes. I mean, I love this song. Um, my mum literally said to me two days ago, what is your favourite song on the album? And I said to her, for me to listen to, if I ever listen to my album, it's Lady of Knock. I don't know. It's something about the connection for me with the lyrics. My mum originally brought this song to me. She had a recording of Daniel O'Donnell singing it. And also Emmett Carhill from the Celtic Tenors. Um, I lie, from Celtic Thunder, Emmett Carhill from Celtic Thunder. And um, both of them, very different recordings, but both really beautiful singers. And I just, I think the fact that my mum loved it so much, but the more I sang it, I loved to be able to sing it for her. So, you know, looking into this and, you know, knowing that Dana actually wrote it, um, I think it's nice to continue that legacy on of her music. So, um, yeah, that one is actually a really special one on the album for me. And moving along, 
Uh, My Heart is in Ireland, performed by the Wolf Tones, written by Wolf Tones member Brian Warfield. So tell me the situation with this one. This is just a family connection. So my uncle, my mum's sister's husband, was also Irish. He, his name was Jerry McKenna, and he exposed my mum to a lot of different Irish artists, and he had great taste in music and could play a lot of instruments himself, and he loved the wolf tones. And my mum had a record of the wolf tones that she used to play on our record player at home when we were young. And this song in particular, I always loved it. And, again, it's a really lovely crowd favourite. I think the even when people don't necessarily know it super well, it's so easy to pick up the chorus of it. And, I mean, how beautiful. My heart is in Ireland. Like, it could have been the title of the album because that's how I feel. Like, you know, my my connection and my family, well, like all of my dad's family is still in Ireland. Like the connection is so strong. So, yeah, it was actually um, it was really beautiful to be able to think that, you know, something that had come from my uncle to my mum to me and listening to it in our childhood home and now recording it myself, um, yeah, I just love that. The next two songs uh, have a, a, a sort of a migratory type background, and yeah. uh, before they became Irish songs, they were actually had their origins in Scotland. So let's talk about yes. Wild Mountain Time and the Parting Glass. So firstly, with Wild Mountain Time uh, in Scotland, that dates back to the 1700s. In Ireland, it's relatively new, around the 1950s. Yes, yes. Uh, For me, I was the soprano for an Australian production called Scotland the Brave. So we toured all around Australia. We went to New York and Toronto. And this was my favourite song in that show. Like it was so beautiful. It was like the full orchestra and the solo musicians. And it's just the most incredibly beautiful song. And so many people know it and resonate with it. And so many Irish albums that I own have this song on it. So I was a little bit cheeky and I was like, surely I can get away with singing it too. So that was that's literally my answer for singing Wild Mountain Time on the Irish songbook. I, I figured if, if the Dubliners uh, and co could all put it on their albums, Sue Ellen Cusack could too. <laughs> Well, the other one, uh, the the parting glass, is another uh, mm. Scottish song originally. But I guess you know there's that Celtic crossover uh, between Ireland and Scotland. The two countries do share a uh, a unique culture. Yeah, they do, and and the, the the melodies of songs are often shared. And for me, this song in particular, um, you know, the Clancy brothers would always finish their shows with this song. And in later years, um, Ed Sheeran, Hosier, you know, so many Irish um, artists have been singing it live in their shows and recording. Um, But I really loved this song because I loved the Clancy Brothers singing it. You know, my, my family really loved the Clancy Brothers and their harmonies and their big jumpers. <laughs> but my my family, um, my mum and some of her, her sisters actually went to see the Clancy brothers. And, you know, as you can tell, if you can't if you can't tell already, a lot of my music is so influenced by my mother's side of the family. Like my my grandmother and my mum just played it all the time. And then in later years to be able to go to Ireland and be able to talk, you know, the the possibility of recording this album through with my uncle who was in the music business. Like he just loved the fact that, you know, even though dad moved to Australia, that the roots were still so deep here in Australia. Well, it's always a pleasure to uh, hear music on a physical disc. We love yeah. hearing the physical disc. Being yeah. up to read, open up the uh, the cover, get all the information because you've uh, gone to great lengths to give us a lot of information in the uh, yeah. in in the booklet as well. So, you know, this is uh, this is the only way to 
hear the Sue Ellen uh, Irish Songbook album on the. Oh, fist, thank but, you. you know, and what? You those just... I want to skimp. They can. They can stream it too. Obvi- yeah, of course they can. You know, it's on Apple Music and Spotify and Deezer, et cetera. But my mind has just been blown at the support of people buying physical copies. Like it has been so wonderful and so lovely to be able to actually hand it to them and give it to them and and talk about the stories behind them and, you know, why I have thanked particular people and, you know, how they've influenced me in my life. You know, um, I think there's something so special about a physical copy and I'm sure there's plenty of people out there like me and 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 yourself that, you know, still have CD players where you can actually physically take it out, and, you know, like, there's so many artists over the years as a music lover, you know, between CDs and records and tapes, you know, it's the memento of that time and that memory in your life. And, you know, I, I really do, I think it's so special that people will still buy a hard copy CD. I think that's so lovely. The support has been so overwhelming. I'm an old guy. My first album was on a pianola reel. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> so well, it's been yes, great to are. talk to you. <laughs> so good. The Irish Thank you so Simone much. Cusack at Noise Eleven.